Okay, so today we're disconnecting the copper and brass uh, shower faucet and we are doing that to install a new shower only faucet. This one had the tub spout attachment and uh, we have to raise it up to about another 8 inches or so. This is the 36 inch mark and that makes it accessible so it's supposed to be between 36 and 48 inches high for just a shower only so that's what we're doing. We're raising it to 36 uh, possibly a little bit higher depending on what the standard reach is. I'll have to do it to some of the measurements once I get some uh, measurements off our shower wall but uh, basically what I'm showing you today is just some of the things that I'm doing and how I'm doing it. So with vertical pipes, they're a little bit different to solder than horizontal copper pipes, okay? And the reason is because you have to wick the solder upwards when you're soldering vertically. Now, one of the common things that people don't remind you of is that water in your lines cools down the flame, the torch, and the heating process so your solder is not going to take it no matter what you do. Now you'll see videos about people using white bread and all kinds of tools to um, get the water out of the lines. Well, with, I'm doing this without shutting the water off in the house. The water is shut off just below the basement here at some regular standard shut off valves. Now the problem with that is that the water can't go back into the main line and drain anywhere. So there's water in these vertical pipes here. Move that out of the way here. Okay, so there's water in these vertical pipes. So what I'm doing, which I'm surprised nobody else has ever said to do, because you need to take at least three or four inches away from the top of your line here so that when you heat this, this water is not cooling as quickly the soldering points. So the more water you can get out of here, the better. Now, you can't put a vacuum on there and suck it out because you have, you're just going to create negative pressure, all right? Because you have no open end on the on the back side. So what I'm doing is I'm wicking. I'm using good quality and I repeat good quality paper towels, and I twist them up, and you can see the wetness of it here. It's down to about here and it's wicking all that water up into the paper towel. This one's pretty wet as well as you can see. Let me pull this out and just to show you what, what I'm talking about. Carefully pull it out when you remove it and that's soaking wet. So after a while go ahead and do a new one but it's cheap, it's effective. Bread is not going to work in a vertical pipe. Look at that. I don't know if you can see that or not. Look how gross that is. Okay, so I'm going to keep doing that until it starts coming out dry. Now I don't want to put more than half the paper towel in because I don't want it getting stuck in there. Then I'll have to cut even further down below. So, wick up the water as best you can. You'll let it dry. Um, the other thing you can do is probably put a hose, uh, clear vinyl tubing or something down in there like they use for fish tanks as far down as you can and actually blow air into it and what that's going to do is that's going to push air in and essentially pull water up so you'll want to have towels or something around this to uh, get as much of that water as possible so you don't make a mess like I did when I cut the line and what that'll do is the more air you put in there the more water will come up so if you have a little air pump you can pump air in there like a fish tank pump and that'll pull water out as well um, and those are like 10 bucks at your local Walmart or pet store or something like that. It's critical you get the water out for that cooling process. Obviously on your hangs down, your water will have already naturally fallen out by gravity. So aside from that, um, I'm going to show you the tools that I'm using to uh, cut that pipe. And it's real simple. So if you're not familiar, um, you have these little devices. I'm not exactly sure what they're called. They're just pipe cutters. And they rotate on two wheels, as you can see here. And there's a blade that's a replaceable blade. 
and you just crank it down with this. And you spin it, crank it down, spin it, crank, crank it down, spin it. And it's going to create a cut just like that. It may not be perfectly, you know, centered. It may come off a little bit based on how tight the little wheels get on one side or the other. Okay? But these are really cheap. They're effective. They're good for tight spaces. They make them in larger types. This particular one, I bought this yesterday. I didn't use it because it was too big to get between this stud and this pipe. But I bought it simply because it's got a deburring tool attached to it. Okay? And so what this will do is you put this in the pipe and you crank it. And it's got a little edge there if you can see that. That goes inside the pipe. It'll go inside the pipe and take off any fine shavings on the inside. Okay, you want your pipe as clean as possible. Now, once you get your pipe cut, you're gonna obviously need to solder it and all that good stuff. So see how corroded that is? And there's tools for that. You can use emery. You can use one of these devices here. It's got a half inch and three quarter inch piece. You slide that on, spin it around a couple of times, and you can clean the inside of your pipe out okay these are just neat little tools to have they're inexpensive and they're actually a must-have when you're doing any kind of soldering work so and as you can see they uh, burnt the wall when they soldered this in place because they didn't have one of these <clears throat> and this is just a piece of burn cloth okay and you set this behind there and so when you're torching you're not burning your uh, drywall or your wood studs and catching fire to your house or melting any kind of electrical. All right, so this is definitely something that's worth having if you plan on doing, you know, some other home repairs because it's it's not too cheap. I think that was about fifteen dollars for that piece of fabric, but it's heavy duty and it's going to last you quite a while. All right, so those are just some of the tools that we're going to be using today. I'm going to go ahead and get this cleaned up, let this uh, evacuate some more water, and then we'll move on to the next step. Alright, stay tuned.